Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Steven here with Team Euphoric, and this month's Moron of the Month goes to... Neil, drumroll please! It's Zach Solt! Let's see why he's a moron. Zach Salt is the inaugural moron of the month, and up until recently he was completely unknown. But then, he ended up marrying a doctor who happens to offer hormone replacement therapy, and now his biceps are bigger than his brain. And as his biceps grow, so do his following. And earlier this month, he ended up posting this. Human beings are obligate carnivores. Plants are not part of a proper human diet. Now, this post in and of itself is not the reason why Zach is a moron. The reason he's a moron is the way in which he responded to any type of counter-arguments that are given. What happens is, whenever somebody offers a counter-argument that he doesn't like, rather than address the argument, he resorts to bullying. And whenever somebody decides to not take any shit from him, and they decide that they will not allow him to bully them, he ends up blocking them instead. And before we get into the actual way in which he responded, let's address the claim itself and get into what exactly obligate carnivores are. Obligate carnivores need to eat 100% meat, and the reason being is one, physiologically they are not capable of digesting plants, and two, evolutionarily, they would not have been able to survive on plants. Humans, we are capable of digesting plants, and we would have had to survive on plants in times of famine, so by definition we cannot be considered obligate carnivores. We are facultative carnivores. This could also be interchanged with the word omnivore, but facultative carnivores are carnivores that consume some meat, but they can also consume other things as well. And with regard to facultative carnivores, there are different sub-classifications. There are hypercarnivores that need to consume at least 70% meat, there are mesocarnivores that consume at least 50% meat, and then there are hypocarnivores which consume less than 30% meat. And one of the reasons why people will claim that humans are obligate carnivores is because there are certain nutrients that are required for survival and we can only obtain them from meat. So therefore, we are obligated to, be, to consume meat, which makes us obligate carnivores. However, the use of the word obligated and the use of the word obligated obligate carnivore are are not the same. We are not obligated to eat meat. We are humans with free will. We could eat Twinkies if all we want to eat are Twinkies. So with regard to that, the other thing worth noting is with regard to us being obligated to eat meat to get those nutrients, an obligate carnivore needs to consume 100% meat in order to get their nutrients because they cannot survive on plants. Us as humans, we can still get all of those essential nutrients from the meat, but we do not need to consume a 100% meat diet in order to get them. So that's a couple things worth noting. Then with regard to the physiology, we have amylases, salivary amylases in our mouths, and we have amylases in our guts. And amylases are the groups of enzymes that allows our body to digest carbohydrates. So physiologically, we are capable of digesting plants. We can digest the vitamins, minerals, and essential amino acids in the plants. And evolutionarily, if we were ever in times of famine and we needed to rely on plants, we would have been able to survive on plants. If all we ate are plants, no, we would not be able to thrive on them. And yes, we would develop some nutrient deficiencies. However, we would be able to survive. So because physiologically we are able to digest plants and evolutionarily we would have been able to survive on plants, we cannot be classified as obligate carnivores. But let's get into the actual argument itself and how ex why exactly Zach Salt is this inaugural moron of the month. An obligate carnivore is one that depends entirely on meat because their diet requires nutrients that are only found in animal flesh. According to National Geographic, I want you to pay very close attention to that, he specifically mentions National Geographic. According to National Geographic, plants do not provide enough nutrients for an obligate carnivore, and their body is unable to digest plants properly. To which I responded, you're cutting out the part of the definition that states their bodies cannot digest plants properly. We can survive and thrive solely on meat, but we are still physiologically capable of digesting plants, so by definition, we are not obligate carnivores. If we were, then every human who consumed plants would be throwing them up. And then I provide the elaborated definition which he conveniently left out of his argument from National Geographic that states, some carnivores called obligate carnivores depend only on meat for survival. Only on meat for survival. Most carnivores are not obligate carnivores, I'm not going to bother going on with the rest of the definition. To which Zach responds, nope, that's a separate definition, you are incorrect in every possible way. Which is very very funny because I provided the National Geographic definition, which is the definition that he cited in his original argument, and then he provides me with this. What are obligate carnivores? An obligate carnivore is one that depends entirely on meat because their diet requires nutrients that are only found in animal flesh. According to National Geographic, and where exactly is he getting this definition? It is from a pet food company, and the title is, Why Your Cat is an Obligate Carnivore. And then he responds to me back with, 
Humans can digest plant fiber? You're joking, right? Name the non-vestigial organ in the human digestive tract that breaks down fiber. Oh wait. Which is very, very funny because I never mentioned anything about plant fiber. All I mentioned was the literal definition from National Geographic, which was the definition that he was originally using in his original claim. To which I responded, the screenshot is from a pet food company and the headline is why your cat is an obligate carnivore. And they referenced the National Geographic definition that I screenshotted earlier. Cats throw up plants, humans don't. You're using a modified definition from a pet food store that sells cat food to justify your definition. Physiolo Again, obligate carnivores cannot physiologically digest plants. We can survive and thrive solely on meat, but we also have salivary amylases as well as amylases circulating throughout our bodies. Therefore, by definition, we are not obligate carnivores because we are physiologically capable of digesting plants and the fact that plants do not contain certain essential nutrients required for optimal human function is irrelevant because that is not part of the definition of obligate carnivore. Then he responds, education is helpful, here's a video, and he references a video by Dr. Anthony Chaffee. And in the video, Chaffee basically says the same thing. There are certain nutrients that are only found in meat that are required for our survival, so because of that, we are obligated to, be, uh, to eat meat, which means we're obligate carnivores, which again, the use of the word obligated and obligate and obligate carnivore are two separate definitions. Then he responds with human beings must consume meat to obtain essential nutrients. Correct. We do need to consume meat, but we do not need to consume 100% meat to obtain all of those essential nutrients. We can contain, we can obtain them from getting some of our essential nutrients from the meat, and then we can also eat other things as well. That is why we are facultative carnivores and not obligate carnivores. But anyway, now you're attempting to straw man me and deflect from the definition. I never said anything about fiber. Stick to the topic. Obligate carnivores, by definition, cannot physiologically digest plants. We are physiologically capable of digesting plants. Also, if you have to use ad hominems and straw man arguments, instead of addressing the literal definition provided by National Geographic that your screenshot supports, then there's really no point in continuing this discussion. Take care. To which he responds, the word obligate might be hard for you to grasp. You're incorrect in every possible point. Human beings are obligate carnivores. And then once again, name the location in the digestive tract that allows us to break down plant fiber. Congratulations, another ad hominem instead of addressing the literal definition. The definition of obligate and the definition of obligate carnivore are not the same, to which I actually give the definition of the word obligate, which is to bind legally or morally or to commit something such as funds to meet an obligation which is completely different from the use of the word obligate in obligate carnivore. And then my last reply to him before he blocked me is, is your only argument to bring up a topic that I never brought up. I never said anything about plant fiber. Who taught you how to debate? Bart K. Obligate carnivores cannot physiologically digest plants. Spinach is a plant. Humans can digest spinach. If humans were incapable of digesting spinach, then they would vomit after consuming it. Do you want me to go over all of the various plants that humans can consume without vomiting, or would you like to bring up plant fiber again to deflect from the definition? And the whole argument about humans cannot digest plant fiber, I don't think Zach exactly understands what is meant by physiologically capable of not digesting something, because even though insoluble fiber will go right through us and we will poo it out, it still is able to pass through our digestive tract. If an obligate carnivore such as a cat were to consume only plants, they would vomit the plant up. And another thing is plant fiber is only one of the actual parts and components of actual plants themselves. Plants also contains vitamins, minerals, and essential amino acids, all of which we are physiologically capable of digesting. That would be the equivalent of me using the argument that humans are not capable of digesting hair. And because animals have hair, we cannot digest animals. Therefore, we are not carnivores because animals have hair and we can't digest hair. But those are just a few of the reasons why, Zach, you are the inaugural Moron of the Month. Thanks for hanging around until the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like the video and comment down in the comment section as it would really help out with the algorithm. And also share this video so we can help get this information out to as many people as possible. And also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the icon in the bottom right hand corner and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the videos. For those of you interested in health optimization, you can check out the video in the top right corner where I discuss the six foundation principles. And for those of you interested in optimizing your performance, then consider becoming a member. It's only $5 per month and you get a ton of perks including exclusive access to this program design lecture series playlist above my head.